I think that there, the, this idea that a leader should be resolute um, has become the idea that a leader should be inflexible, right? And like never change their ideas. And, and I, I don't think that, that those two need to coexist. We are not here to rubber stamp. We're here to make sure we're being good stewards for our members. But you've got to make sure before you're asking anybody to show up and be real, that they know that the space that they are going to be real in is going to accept them and that they don't need to fit in, but that they belong. Welcome back to Nevada Realtors Today, your place for timely updates on the news and trends that matter to realtors in the Silver State. Now let's join your Nevada Realtors President, Brandon Roberts, and Nevada Realtors CEO, Tiffany Banks, for today's episode of Nevada Realtors Today. Today, we are joined with the incredible, amazing Paula Montefer, who is a highly sought after national speaker, strategic planning consultant, and national leader. And so I would love to just read all the incredible, wonderful things about you, but I want to hear from you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Let's see. I've been a realtor for 22 years. I am honestly kind of addicted to leadership. I love everything about it. Most especially, I love the people who set themselves apart to serve others because they just, they tend to be just the best people in the world. And then I make the best friends. Um, I love traveling. I have a 13 year old daughter who is my pride and joy. And what else can I tell you that might be interesting? Oh, I don't know, but I want to stop you for a second. Yeah, you said you love leadership. So what about challenging leadership or difficult times? Because I feel like you actually don't run away from I just leaned in. <laughs> you, you lean in. So I want to hear about you, but can you tell us a little bit? Because I admire that quality. I think sometimes, you know, people don't like um, to lean into difficult conversations right. or situations, but you actually seem to thrive there. Oh, I really appreciate that. Um, it doesn't always feel like thriving. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> Whatever it looks like on the outside, it might not always feel like thriving on the inside. But I think where there is a challenging situation is where a leader is needed. Mm -hmm. That's where leadership is needed the most. I, I can't say this and look at Brandon and not think about all the challenges that he's had to face mm -hmm. this year and think, you know, I've been with him. I've been lucky enough to, you know, be next to him while he's dealing with some really huge issues and facing them head on, unabashed, not blinking, being calm, being... Mm -hmm caring and being respectful. Here's the thing. Disagreement is not disrespect, mm -hmm. right? And I think that that's where a lot of people get twisted up in challenges. And I think where, where I'm not afraid to come in is that I can see maybe a little bit easier than the people that are in the thick of it, how everybody is really wanting mm -hmm. to do the best for others. They just see things differently. Not well. And that's what's creating the conflict. Mm -hmm. And I actually admire all those same qualities that you do about Brandon. He didn't know that that's what this podcast was about, actually. I was talking about him. Uh, do not cut us off yet, Brandon. We're not done. Um, <laughs> but, but no, I think that he also, he's always balancing. We're going to talk about him like he's not here. He's always right. balancing what's right. And I really, really, really admire that. And he doesn't just jump and like say what he's going to say. He listens to every other person. And then he says like one line and you're like, like the world, you know, just the world opens up because you're like, yes, that's, that's the, that's the solution. And so again, I really admire all those same qualities in you. And I think it takes a lot for a person to take that much in and listen in such a kind, compassionate way and then actually have a brilliant solution for it. So we oh, all appreciate you here. You know, I actually Can think, I speak you know? No, not yet. I have, I have to say one more thing. I'm so sorry. Okay. But I actually think that um that what you just spoke about with Brandon is is a superpower, right? The ability to step back, to not instantly engage mm -hmm. and to take the time to really listen to all sides. And I think it comes from, and this is going to sound like a negative, but just hear me out. It comes from Brandon not wanting to have conflict with people. Mm -hmm. right? Or the spotlight, by the way. Or the spotlight, right? And, mm -hmm. and so it's interesting because whenever we think about qualities, right, we always think about them as a negative or a positive when the truth is they always have both. It depends on how you employ them and how you use them. And so I have admired Brandon's ability to sit back and listen and take in all the sides and not immediately jump in to a fight. 
we're good. Okay, now it's Brandon. Okay, now you can talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is this is me deflecting. <laughs> not one person can not one person can do this on their own. I mean, we've got a great executive team, and uh, Tiffany, you've been amazing. Uh, your leadership and direction and, and all the hard work you and your staff have put in. And Paul, I really want to thank you for spending the time um, becoming an honorary Nevada Nevada realtor, um, helping us with our strategic plan, helping us with advice and the whole thing. I think leadership, good leadership is a team effort. And I, I think we've got a great team up here. So thank you. Well, thank you. And now so let's talk about you. I'm so proud that I get to, that I've gotten to be on your team this year, really. It's been Once amazing. you're in, you're not going anywhere. We have to get I you to go anywhere. Now. Don't tell Tommy Choi if you get swag before he does. <laughs> he will not hear it from me. Okay. <laughs> okay, tell us more. Sorry, I had to interrupt. No, 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 that's totally okay. okay. Well, I was actually going to tell you something that I, I have only shared with like maybe 20 Ooh. people so far. So I like it's kind of like you'll hear it first here or maybe kind of. Okay. Um. I am almost finished writing a book on leadership and it's based on an interview that I did with my uncle Bill, who was a world war II paratrooper hmm. and Brandon's nodding his head because he heard me give a talk about it at the regional conference um, when we were in Jackson hole. And so it does have some of the top, some of the, some of the topics from the talk, as well as other leadership lessons that I pulled from his interview. And then at the back of the book, it'll have the full interview for people to look through. And so that's a passion project and kind of a big dream thing. And so if I'm going to talk about myself, let me talk about dreams that I haven't achieved yet. Do we have a name for this book? Yes. It's called Rendezvous with Destiny, A Field Guide to Life and Leadership. Love that. That sounds incredible. It is an amazing story. Yeah, it is an amazing story. In fact, that was one of the things I was going to ask you about on this for sure, because you did give that talk in Jackson Hall at the regional, um, regional 11 conference. And, you know, to tell you the truth, I'd never seen Band of Brothers. Um, and I came back from that trip and I immediately watched it. I, don't, because, I, have I, was, right looking, now. I was looking for your uncle because, yeah, it was an amazing story. And his his journey is just it's really cool. It's it's funny because, you know, I, I, I have a degree in World War II history that I don't use every day. Um, I interviewed World War II veterans, including my Uncle Bill. I was fortunate enough to attend the Easy Company reunions. They had a couple of them in Arizona, and I was able to go and sit with them. Mm -hmm. And I just recently picked up um, a book that he and Babe wrote together. And I'm still, it's like, I'm still learning more, and I'm still <laughs> learning more. and And every bit of it is wildly inspirational and it just speaks to the heart of leadership I think well that sounds incredible and I missed your talk there so I'm excited to to maybe hear it um, somewhere else but so what do you think if there's like just one or two nuggets of like the strongest leadership or just tell us just anything about leadership that you feel like would be relevant Okay, I love this question. I really do think, and this is this has evolved over the years for me, by the way, but I've come to, to know that one of the most important attributes of a great leader is humility, right? Knowing that you do not know it all, mm -hmm. knowing that there is more out there to be learned, understanding that you don't have all of it in front of you. Just, just having that humility as a leader um, makes all the difference in the world, right? Because we can teach anybody anything as long as there's a space inside of them. <laughs> They're not all so filled up with themselves mm -hmm. <laughs> that there's no room to put anything else in there, right? <laughs> but when you can be humble as a leader, hmm. then you're able to actually listen. If you go into every conversation that you're about to have and you already know what the conclusion is, you actually never entered any discussion. <laughs> ever. <laughs> you were never really in that discussion. You might have come in with a monologue, but there was actually no interaction. Are you with me on that? You have to yeah. be willing to have your mind changed. And I think that that comes from humility. Yeah, yeah. That's a tough one. I, I don't think a lot of people want to have their mind changed. It seems, seems like in today's day and age, even more. I mean, I think that's true. Yeah. I think that there, the, this idea, um, that a leader should be uh, resolute um, has become the idea that a leader should be inflexible, right? And like mm -hmm. never change their ideas. Mm -hmm. And and I I don't think that that those two need to coexist. 
-hmm. I think that you can be firmly held in your beliefs and you can also be smart enough to know that things change. Mm -hmm. There's things you don't know. And maybe those beliefs need to be changed and evolve over time, right? Because everything evolves and changes and we get to decide if we're going to or not (laughs) along with it, right? Mm -hmm. Everything else is, we get to decide if we're going to. Right. And you can be strong in your decision. So be a solid decision maker, but be flexible. You know, like I think we think about COVID or different times that, I mean, I guess almost everything, like even strategic planning, right? Like we're, right. we're going to go in with a plan, but right. then all of a sudden we're going to be faced with a piece of legislation right. or a major issue that we maybe weren't, you know, like preparing for. And right. then we can either be proactive or reactive. And I think being right. flexible of making the best, I always like to say it's the best decision at the time. Oh, I love that. Because it's the best decision with the information that you have. Yes, it might change. That doesn't make you a weaker leader. It just means you you can make consideration new information that you didn't otherwise have before. Yeah, that's exactly where I'm headed toward. That's exactly where my mind is with it, right? And I think that the the worst leaders are the ones that say stop, you know? And that's what you guys know whenever I'm leading sessions. I'm like, you may not say... We have always done it this way, mm-hmm. or we tried that once and it didn't work. I don't, I mean, I, I, those phrases are death. Like, I don't care. Nobody cares, first of all, um, unless you're going to tell us what didn't work so we can avoid that and make sure it does work this time. Right. Um, but staying stuck in those opinions means that you can prevent yourself. And if you're a leader of an organization, you're preventing everyone else from being able to move forward. And Let's just be really honest about what moving forward looks like. It does not look like an unending climb straight to the top. It's going to look like this because that is life. Because like of everything you just right. Because of everything you just talked about, Tiffany. Because you know maybe some of the people listening to this podcast right now started off this year not knowing that they were going to have to change the way that they run their business, and now they are either looking at that as a positive and a way to separate themselves from the people that aren't running their businesses like businesses and aren't showing up as true professionals for our customers, right? So excited about it. And the people that are screaming chicken littles, freaking out Mm -hmm. because they can't possibly process a change because they don't have a process to their business to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I, in the past, I haven't really been a fan of strategic plans. And the reason being is because it seems like you just meet, you put some on paper and then you never look at it again. You know, um, that has not been the experience. I mean, we started working with you on this strategic plan back in January, February of this year, and we're still working on this plan because we're getting a lot of input. But can you share with our listeners kind of the process we're going through and why this might be different than strategic plans in the past? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, the big thing, and I know that what we, one of the things topics we want to talk about today was unity. And I think that the only way you get to unity is when you invite people to the table, right? And, and unity does not mean that everyone is thinking the same exact thing, right? That's like brainwashing or something else. That's not, that's not what any of us want. Unity is all of us coming together and facing the same direction. And it might mean that we see different things when we're looking forward, but we're all looking forward. And we're all facing the same direction um, where it becomes an issue and where we, 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 I mean, let's be honest, it could have gone this way this year for us is when instead of coming together, people face off against one another. Mm-hmm. And then instead of facing the future and looking forward to be ready to combat what comes at them, they're looking at each other mm-hmm. to see what can be combative. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to doing strategic planning sessions, What I absolutely love when I'm invited in to work on them is that rather than um, talking about things like you're kind of saying, Brandon, words, 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 putting them into a piece of paper that may or may not become anything that's real. um, I love the ability to make sure that every single person that is in that room gets tapped into, right? Gets an opportunity to speak, gets an opportunity to share Um, And what I have found is that most often uh, there's usually like one or two people that uh, don't don't come forward with their ideas in any given group. And then I'll go to them and I'll say, you know, not to put too fine a point on. Hey, Brandon, (laughs) what do you think about, about this? And then like Tiffany said, you'll come out with this great thing and I'll be like, stop bullarding those wonderful ideas. Still waters run very deep. Um. 
And I guess I'm mentioning all of this because when you're leading a strategic planning session, it's not that much different than leading a meeting or leading, you know, any business meeting. You really want to make sure that everyone in the room knows that um, their time is valued and that what they are going to share is of worth. And you really want to, with intention, make sure that you're engaging with every person in the room, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think when you get people together, um, and we did it even via Zoom, so I just want to put that out there, that, that obviously face-to-face -face is best, but even when it's via Zoom or on the phone, when you get people together, um, I think Brene Brown said it's really hard to hate people up close, right? It's, you, you are instantly smacked with the fact that this is another human who is working as hard as they can to put this forward. Where we lose sight of that and cause causes grief and creates more turmoil is when we're behind a keyboard, right? And we're communicating with somebody with our keyboard courage, or we've decided to not look at somebody as a human, but as like a monolith, we call them they instead of the person themselves. And it makes it much easier to rally against. But when you actually sit down with another person, even if you have different disagreeing and differing thoughts, yeah, you can see whether it's in their inflection in their voice that you're listening to, or you're looking at their body language, you can see that even though they're disagreeing with what you're saying, that you're both still trying to do the best for whatever organization or whatever contract or whatever issue you have placed in front of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you do get a sense, like at least in all of our breakout sessions of like, then you almost have like this ownership in what you're creating together. And it's, and even, you know, when they come, came back to the larger group and it's like, you know, almost like team one came up with this and they're like backing each other, like what team one came up with. And, you know, like it, it's like it, this instant camaraderie that you wouldn't have otherwise had if everyone's working in a silo or on their own, or, you know, we just sent it out and said, email us back your responses, but you're actually, you know, like talking through ideas, get, getting feedback, and then somebody else has another idea. So I think that there's nothing that we're places like that type of collaboration. Yeah. And I think that that's been something that's been extraordinarily important to this leadership team in particular this yeah. year, isn't just to check a box to Brandon's point of like throw stuff on a paper and say we did it, but to actually go through a process, even though it's long, you know, more time right. consuming, more energy, all the things, but at the end of the day, it's it's worth it and it's worthwhile to get the groups together in this way. Yeah, I mean, I mean, let's be real. You, you all allowing this many sessions and bringing in this many people means you've got to give up a little bit and give it to them, right? To be able to come in and take that power. And so I really commend all of you because you could have just sat with five of you and come up with what the ideas were going to be for the year. And with intention, you blew it up and blew it up. And so we're going to bring in more people and bring in more people. And, and that's how you change culture, right? That's how we get people to see that, Hey, that person that you were thinking, whatever you had in your head about them that you made up before you actually got to sit with them in a room or sit and work with them on a zoom. And now you see that they're working on the same thing you're working on. And they care about it with the same heart you care about it. Right. And it just breaks down those walls, right? Where we fail is where we fail to see and recognize each other's shared humanity. That's where we fail. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, because that's something that I so intrinsically love is that that's what I'm able to bring in and remind everybody. Mm -hmm. And I also think that people are just getting beat the hell up right? Like they're beat up by the news. They're beat up by news that isn't about us, but is just depressing. Um, markets are difficult across the boards for people. They're, they're sorting out what they're going to do for their businesses. They've got family lives. Like life is difficult. And then for a lot of us, most of us, the things that we say to ourselves are not kind either, right? I mean, we have an onslaught and sometimes we do it to ourselves too. And I think that one of the most beautiful things that I have witnessed working with associations is that it takes everybody out of that for just a moment 
and they get to see that they are part of something that is larger than themselves, that is of importance, that is of worth, that is making a difference, not just in your local communities, but state and nationally. I, people lose sight of these things. But I remember going and talking to senators and congressmen about how we need first time home buyers and working so hard to create a tax credit for them so that we can get more first time home buyers into the market. You know, our code of ethics, which I'm a dork and I love, in the preamble, it talks about um, widely, widely, widely owner. I'm not messing it up right now. Wide ownership, right? And where we make that promise real is when we do things like creating a first time home buyer's tax credit so that the home ownership is not reserved just to a small few, but it does have that widely allocated ownership mm -hmm. upon which depends the survival and growth of free institutions and our civilization. Those words sound like they don't actually apply, but they do, mm -hmm. right? Widely allocated ownership means that not only a few rich people across the country get to own land in America, right? And that's what we fight for. And that's what we do. People remember that, you know, and, and realize that. And so when we can tell them, hey, you're part of this and it looks small, but look at this big picture yeah. that you get to help create. And you're a part of that big picture. Thank you for being here. It helps yeah. remind them that they are, that they can do so much more when we come together. Mm -hmm. So you travel all over the country all the time working with lead individual leaders to leadership programs, to organizations, to boards. In your opinion, what do you think, like what qualities to, does like a high functioning organization have or a high, high functioning leader? Like, is it the same? Is it different? I love this question. You know, I, I don't mean to be redundant, but I'm going to go back to humility again. Okay. And here's how it plays out for organizations. For an organization that plays out as in no one feels scared or unnerved to come forward and say, hey, here's something that I think could be done better, could be done different. Mm -hmm. Right? If an organization is humble enough, then they're ready to receive that information, ready to receive that. Um, for leadership, um, I think attributes of of great leadership can be found in not only the deeds that they do, but I'm going to say the culture that they create. The legacy of a great leader for me is less about the things that they can hang their hat on than the people that they can point to and say, all of these people <laughs> are here because I grabbed their hand and said, why don't you come one day? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, that's how you create true legacy as a leader, in my opinion. So um, I know we've got listeners out there that would like to get involved and some that probably would like to get involved, but want to stay away from conflict and stuff like that. What got you involved in the association and moving up? I, I feel like I fail this question every time it's asked of me because the real answer, the your honest, story, which I have to give, like, I can't tell you that the truth, right? Because you know me. But the real answer is, I saw all these smart, um, uh, engaged, fun people that were involved in leadership. And I was like, I want to sit at their table. I mean, I wanted to be friends with the, with the cool kids, but they weren't cool. They were, they were brilliant and they were industry thought leaders, right? Um, and so that's why I continued on. Uh, when I first got involved in leadership, a friend of mine said, uh, we want you to be MLS chair, which if anybody doesn't know, that's one of the most difficult positions you could possibly come in at because it is very technical and there are a lot of rules and there, there's a lot to that. Okay. And I was told it's one meeting a month and, you know, all the things that we hear from everybody when they get, it's never just one meeting a month, just so you know, for everybody out there listening. Um, Brandon, he, don't said listen. Me, he said to me at that time, he said to me at the time, Oh my gosh, you're going to love it. You're going to be addicted. And I was like, yeah, right, dude. And, you know, look at me now. I'm still, and here I am, like, I think one of the first things when you asked me to describe myself is I'm like, I love leadership, you know, and I, I really do. I genuinely do. Um, I ended that year of MLS chair, which was, which was horrible and awful. It was the year that we were looking at VOWs for all of my veterans that can remember all the way back when. 
And so there was a lot that needed to be discussed and a lot of rules that needed to be changed. And at the end of that year, um, I said to um, Holly Mayberry and Kim Horn, who are past presidents from Arizona Realtors, I told them both that I will be running, not walking away from leadership at the end of this year. See y'all later. And they cornered me and told me why that wouldn't be happening and how I was going to be running for my local president. And then we continue on to state leadership and damned if they weren't exactly right, if that isn't exactly what I did. And so I think there's a couple of things I want to say about all of that. Number one is the ask is so important, mm -hmm. right? We need to be asking people to get involved and it doesn't really matter what level or what, hey, we need a little bit of extra help at an upcoming meeting. Can you hand out some pamphlets for us, right? Because people want to be involved. They want to help. Give them that opportunity. And then the more they're seeing that, hey, we need, we need you to sit on this committee for us. We need you over here. But ask people and make sure when you're reaching out to the hand to grab somebody to ask them that that hand doesn't look exactly like yours. Mm -hmm. Right? So, yeah. So you passed because what I was, what I was hoping you were going to say and you did was the fact that somebody encouraged you or somebody basically Vaughn told you to do something, right? And that's how right. I got in. That's how I think a lot of leaders do. Um, and I think it's our responsibility and leadership to identify the young leaders coming up. Um, from your ex experience, what traits should we look for when identifying potential young leaders? Oh, people with questions, right? <laughs> people that have questions. Curious. Curious. Right? People, <laughs> people that are curious, the ones that are, that are showing up to the meetings. Um, and then, uh, and, and then also you know, making sure that we're giving them an opportunity. You know, the, the Young Professionals Network exists for a reason. There is a discrimination against younger professionals in our industry. So <clears throat> let's be real yeah. about that and let's make sure we're pulling them in. Um, and I also think, okay, two thoughts I want to make sure I say. Number one is it's really important that you ask and it's really important that you give continued encouragement. Would I have continued on if Holly and Kim had not cornered me? Um, hell to the no. <laughs> that would not have happened. They wouldn't. It would, there's no way I would be here with you right now if that had not happened, right? Um, I forgot the other thing, but it'll come back to me later. Um, How did you start? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I actually don't know I this. Story. Yeah, I was actually voluntold to, to be part of Women's Council. Oh. And so I was told to run for treasurer, which I got. And then I ended up moving up to be president. Um, in 2013 of our local chapter. Um, and that's what put me into uh, NVR leadership was Women's Council. And then the rest is kind of history. I love that story. I love leadership origin stories, first of all, <laughs> just in general. Yeah. And then, you know, Women's Council, their whole prerogative is leaders made here. So well done, Women's Council. <laughs> nice job. I think I was, uh, I was the one and only male president in the state. I don't know if they'd do it again. <laughs> Well, I think so. No, it was it was a, it was actually a tough time because it was 2000, you know, um, 2013 ish. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, we had a lot of REOs and foreclosures and stuff here. Membership was really down. Hmm. I mean, it was it was an interesting time. But those getting involved in that and and uh, NVR leadership and stuff like that in the journey, it's been the best thing I've gotten out of it is the relationships. Right. And uh, I mean, I would never know you. I would be so, so sad. <laughs> would even know. <laughs> I would she be would sad know. and not know why. Yeah, she would have a piece missing go. from her heart. And then when she found you eventually, she'd be like, that's why. <laughs> oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> I love Brandon. such a pragmatic. He's like, you wouldn't even know. I know. <laughs> Don't be so pragmatic. Don't be so pragmatic. Yeah. That's um, so fascinating, Brandon. I didn't know that about you. I love that story, though. And, and I, I do think that developing leaders and bringing people in and looking for who's not at the table, like who's not represented right now from our state, let's make sure we get some of them there or from, or from our area or from, you know, what, wherever we're coming together to, to pull people together. And then I think also just, just being prepared and, and, and looking forward to differing opinions. I know that the two of you have had to hear me say this over and over again. But I, I love this leadership quote, and I do say it often in meetings because I want people to recognize where the goodness is. And it's the General Patton quote, you know, again, a World War II girl here, right? Um, but it's if everyone's thinking the same thing, then someone isn't thinking, mm -hmm. right? 
Like, I, I want to have some discussion on this. I don't want everybody to just go along with it. We are not here to rubber stamp. We're here to make sure we're being good stewards for our members. Yeah, well, yeah. absolutely. We're not about rubber stamping at all this year. I think that, you know, no. you've been a part of so, so many of our, you know, are, are great. And I love how, I think, it, wait, what have you, what did you say to us at the beginning of the year? Like sky's the limit, right? Like just think yep. so big. And I think that that's really helped give us the confidence to think big because, you know, it's like you can so easily get caught in like the day to day of like, let me just get through this. That's like required of me. But when you think about moving an organization forward, like you, you want, and, and again, I, I'm going to commend Brandon, this leadership team of involving as many like through industry forward pack of like, let's hear from the brokers what they want from us. Like, tell us what you need and want from us so that we can provide and be a good resource for you. Because sometimes we don't know unless, you know, somebody tells us. And you're actually able to see superstars in yes. all of these different, like, workshops or, you know, work groups or packs right. or strategic planning. You're actually able to see leaders that you might not have noticed because you have, they haven't been in front of you before, but you're like, wow, that person's actually like articulating, you know, the message in such a great way. And you could tell they care and they, you know, they see what the mission of the organization is and they want to help with the vision. And you get excited about those new leaders. Cause you're like, come on, you know, we need you. Right. And I think that that now more than ever, those are the times we're in the, we need you phase because no decision at our level is made just with us like it's not Brandon and I making a decision or even our executive team it's like what input are we are we getting to make the best decision right. and so I really and I just want to be clear that that's not yeah. that's not always the case that is a very intentional choice by you and your executive team again I travel around I get to work with all different kinds of groups there's more than one way to do things mm -hmm. but that is a very intentional choice that you all have taken on this year to make sure that you're bringing in people and you're getting such great ideas. And I do, I mean, as you were talking about all the different um, superstars coming yeah. forward, I was thinking, I was like, I'm like naming them in my head of all the people that have come up this year that I'm like, yeah, this one and this one. And what's this person doing? And where are you putting this person? And I'll, hey. talk, I'll talk to you later about that list. But it does give you that opportunity and it gives them that opportunity as well, mm -hmm. you know? And that's why the Leadership Academy has worked so well. And you had the pleasure of coming to work with our group uh, session this year. And you've never been a part of the Leadership Academy in, in our state before. No, no. And I loved it. And I loved it so much. And you know this already, that I stole some of your ideas and I used them. I did. And I, I, I know. I remember I you texted me. You're like, just use this idea, which I, again... That's amazing because I'm probably going to use some of your ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as well we should, right? And that's that's the power of association. And, and that's kind of, that's one of the beauties of being able to be involved in a local, a state, and a national is that we all share with each other. Mm -hmm. We're all like exceedingly generous mm -hmm. in how we will share what we're doing, what we're working on, forms we've created, classes we've created, whatever we can do to help one another because we understand Mm -hmm. that the best way to get forward is to help everyone around us move mm -hmm. forward. Good, good. And we're, we're blessed in this state. And I don't know how it is in all the other states, but to have some of, um, like we've got a lot of young talent coming up that I think is going to, our association is going to be in great hands moving forward. And uh, like I said, we've got a great uh, leadership team now. Um, a lot of people lining up to follow me through uh, the process, keep things going in the right direction. You got Tiffany at the helm um, guiding things in that direction. But yeah. I wanted to kind of just say it's it's been really neat here because we have a lot of old guards, I should say. And I don't mean it in age. I just mean like a George, George Peak and a Jack Woodcock and a Linda wow. Weinberger. And, I mean, you're and naming Daisy. industry legends beyond your state, right? When you're naming those people. So, wow. Yeah. And if you're open to listening to them, I mean, there's just an amazing amount of um, information and wisdom that you can gain. And so, I mean, I know they're, they're longtime listeners of ours. <laughs> so I, um, really I just want to say thank you to them. I love that. I love that because, because you made, you made so many good points by saying that. First of all, the fact that they're 
our longtime listeners, can we just talk about their loyalty and fierceness to Nevada that like whatever you do, they're like, we're in, we're showing, when is it? Like when you mentioned the podcast with me in the session we were in yesterday yeah. and Keith Kelly was like, where's I, my notice of this? I did and I, he was yeah. like, excuse did me. Did I miss something? Like I want order, to order, right? Part. <laughs> but it's because they want to show up so much. And then what you're talking about, about their experiential knowledge, friends, 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 friends. When I am saying to you, I don't want to hear, we've always done it this way, or we tried it once. Um, I am not saying that I don't want to hear from the people who have the experience that can tell us what happened in the past. We need to hear from them. They are absolutely crucial to us. And, and I think that where it really becomes a very powerful group is when you get the new people, maybe maybe they've never served on anything ever mm-hmm. and letting them know that what you have to bring to this table is of worth. And there's a reason we need your voice in this room and not the Kool-Aid drinkers right now, right? Mm-hmm. And then you've got the people that have helped made the Kool-Aid for so many decades that they can tell you what the recipe was 40 years ago in case you want to go back to it. Because mm-hmm. sometimes we do, right? Because we don't need to reinvent the wheel always. It's so helpful. That's where you get a really powerful group. And again, just want to point out that those people are not coming at it looking the same way, which is what we need. People looking at things from many different angles so we can find the best way forward for us as a group. Well, I think the, the best question to ask somebody after they say, we tried that and it didn't work, is why do you think it didn't work? You can only say that if you're going to explain all the ways it didn't work and give some suggestions for how it can, because that's, we want to know, but we don't want to be blockaded from ever having to play with that thought again, right? Oh, so when you think of the word legacy, what kind of legacy do you hope to leave in terms of unity and leadership development? All right. The legacy of Paula. Oh, dear. What does it look um, like? I would hope that it looks like a lot of uh, heart-led leaders that feel confident enough to be themselves, their imperfect selves, so that they can grow more heart-led leaders that feel confident to be their imperfect selves. That's beautiful. Make sure you include that in your book. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to need the transcripts from this because I will not remember anything that I have said. Okay. I'll get you the transcripts. Um, you know, you, you think about your, the, the way you show up for people and the way, the language that you use and your authentic, your, your authentic nature and authenticity is very rare. Like, do you know that about yourself? Do you know that I have been so much more myself this year because you gave me the confidence, you, Tiffany, gave me the confidence to be just unabashedly me in an email to people. And then ever since then, I've been like, well, maybe I'll be a little more me. Maybe I'll be a little more me. So thank you. You're welcome. But I feel like you've shown up like that. And it's, you know, I think is especially as a woman leader, you know, you think about if I come off like too warm, maybe That's exactly I right. be taken the right way. I need to be this like, you know, like buttoned up professional, but exactly you, right. like the way you show up and you talk, I, I think it makes people feel so comfortable and respected and just it's, I, I actually think about it a lot because if I I hope to show up as like one tenth of that leader that you are because it's very rare and it's very special. And just so you know, like the way you talk to people, even if somebody and I just love you know how you say okay, friend, you know, like just the 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 language around the words that you you really soften situations and soften what could be again like maybe it could go a different way if somebody gets abrasive or defensive, but you just like lean in and I don't know if you have not spent time in, in Paula's like, you know, ray of sunshine for a few minutes, you need to, because if you're having a bad day, just call Paula and she'll make you feel like a million dollars. I would love to. I honestly would. Um, you know, I think that, um, a big thing too, I know this is kind of going the other way, but I think a big thing too, is that too often we don't let people talk about things that are tough, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, this year I've been like, we're not, we're not moving on. We're going to have this discussion right now because this just came up and Real it's talk. Important. and we need, and we need to talk about it. Let's, I need you to come off your mics and or come off mute and let's be real. Right. 
And and you guys have heard me say that like multiple times throughout the year. And I think that I think that there's something to that too. Um, but you've got to make sure before you're asking anybody to show up and be real that they know that the space that they are going to be real in mm-hmm. is going to accept them mm-hmm. and that they don't need to fit in, but that they belong. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And then you can create that space for people. I was just going to say, those have been some tough conversations that you've led us through. But and, look and how much everybody wanted to, to come out. together still, you know? Yeah. And it, yeah, it, we all grew from it for sure. And it was, it was great. Wow. And I, I would just say, thank you, Paul, for stepping up and being a leader. A lot of times as a leader, you don't realize the people you impact and how you change people's lives, just simple things you say or do. And I, and I think you just, I think you're impacting a lot of people in our market. And I know you are across the country too. So thank you. That means so much to me. Thank you so much. I would say the same about each of you. Thanks, Paula. And if any of our listeners want to find you, not only to register register for your book that's coming out, right. but to actually work with you, um, you know, both in their organization or I'm sure you do one on one. I mean, you just seem like you will be available for like the really the individual needs. I think even when we first started chatting, it's like, can you come do this? Can you do this? No, can you do this? And you're like, yes, yes, yes. I can do all of those things. And if I can't, I will tell you because the last thing I want to do is say, show up for something that I can't do and have somebody expect something of me. So I will be honest with you if I can't do it. Um, But I'll give you two easy ways you can find me. Um, Got my website, paulamontofer.com. There's a little bit of information on there for practitioners, for people looking for... um, uh, client intake sheet. There's my information about my classes that I could offer to you. And then if you're heading to Boston in November, you can check me out on uh, November 9th. I'll be speaking at high noon, delivering the rendezvous with destiny speech. So there's a couple ways you can check. Well, we'll be there to support you. Thanks friends. Thank you so much, Paula. And we hope you have a great day. Thank you for inviting me to this. Thank you for the work that you're all doing. And thank you for letting me be on your team this year. I love being a Nevada realtor. Thank you. (laughs) You're incredible.